Statistical inference, one of the biggest, most widely tested topic on the AP Statistics exam. Let's break it down. If you like and subscribe to this video, you're going to get a cool bonus and you're going to watch and find out. So what is statistics? It's the procedure and processes of using sample statistics to make judgments about population parameters. It's really where statistics and parameters come together. So the whole idea is very simple. We're using data from a sample to make a judgment about a population. All right, now, in AP statistics, we focus on proportions, means, counts of data, and the slope of regression lines. Those are the four areas where we focus on inference. Now, there's two types of inference that we like to look at, two types of procedures at least. Creating an interval to estimate the population parameter, meaning we have no idea what a population parameter is, but a sample statistic points us into a direction of where we think it could be or we can conduct a test to make a judgment about a population parameter. So maybe we think a population parameter is more than 16 and we want to find out if there is evidence of that being true. Now, for an interval, I pretty much go with four steps. The AP statistics, you know, some teachers teach it with three steps, but at the end of the day, as long as you have these four items, I don't care how many steps you call it, but we wanna name the procedure being used, check the conditions for that procedure to be possible, do the math to find the interval, and then actually interpret the interval. On the AP Statistics Formula Sheet, they give a very generic formula for a conference interval. It all starts off with a statistic. That is something that comes from a sample. Again, in this class, the ones that we deal with primarily are going to be a sample proportion, a sample mean, or a sample slope. And then from that statistics, we're going to add and we're going to subtract this entire back part, which all in together is called the margin of error. Now, the margin of error is a combination of two things. A critical value, that's a Z star or a T star. It's basically how much we're willing to reach. That is dependent on your, your confidence level, 95%, 98%. So your level of confidence can determine how far you're going to reach for that Z star or T star. And then we're going to multiply that critical value by your standard error. So again, that's the standard error of your sample proportion, the standard error of your sample mean, or the standard error of your slope, all depending what it is you're looking at. So put it all together, and that's a very generic way of talking about a confidence interval. Now, for a significance test, we're also looking at four steps. Name the procedure and state your hypotheses. There's the null and the alternative hypotheses. Check the conditions for the test to be conducted. Do the math to find your test statistic and your p-value, and then make a conclusion based on your p-value. Now, we have a couple different types of test statistics. The first is a z-score or a t-score. This is a standardized test statistic. This is found by taking your statistic, that's what you found in your sample, minus the parameter, that's what you thought to be true all divided by the standard error of the statistic. Now, the other type of test statistic we have is a chi-squared. This is for counts of data, a chi-squared test. And the chi-squared form is a little bit different, but it's the sum of your observed minus your expected value squared, all divided by your expected. Now, what I have created for you is what I call a book of inference. It is a book I have put together. I use the word book lightly, but it is a um, document that details all of the different inference procedures. I have 13 of them. In truth be, there's 14 of them, but I kind of think that that last one is extremely rarely used on the AP exam, so I usually don't even get to it, so I don't have it listed here. But here are those different inference procedures, and then the best is on the following pages, I give a kind of a rough run view of actually what I've already kind of talked about in this video thus far. But after that stuff, it also gives some formulas that are going to be very useful to you for those standard errors and for those population parameters and information like that. What I have for you is directions. Directions on how to conduct every one of these different inference procedures. For example, right now you're looking at a one sample Z interval for a population proportion. So not only do I have the directions for how to do it, I then have a full example, an example of that procedure actually being done with all of my work step-by-step step being shown beautifully. Here's the next one, a one sample Z test for population proportion. Again, a page of directions and then a page of an example with all of the work shown. So I have this for all of the different procedures that you could possibly be asked on the AP statistics exam. 
Now, I want to provide you this document. That way you could use it and help you prepare and study. All you have to do is first like and subscribe to my channel and please hit that notification button. That way you get notifications when I make new videos and then shoot me an email to help with apstats at gmail.org or excuse me, gmail.com and I will email you that document that has all of those different inference procedures in it. Now, the only last thing I, I, I make sure I want to say here is I'm not perfect. There may be a mistake in my work somewhere. In fact, if you find a mistake, please email me and let me know. And second, every teacher teaches things a little bit different. I may say something a little bit different than your teacher, so don't criticize me too much. I'm not perfect. Don't be like, well, that's actually off by a couple decimals or it should be done this way or that way or you worded that wrong. Okay, I'm trying to get you to do the absolute best you can on the AP exam. Is my work perfect in every single way, on every single step, and every single aspect? Maybe not. I'll be the first to admit that. So don't diagnose it too much. If you don't want it, if you're going to just yell at me for it being bad, then don't email me and don't use it. But I really think that just going through the different procedures, seeing the work that is required, and then seeing a full example will really help you understand what needs to be done because I'm going to promise you this. I know there's a lot of them and not all of them are going to be on the AP exam, but at least one of them will definitely be on the FRQ portion and many of them, multiple of them, again, maybe not all of them, but many of them will definitely show up somehow, some way in a multiple choice question. So again, that's it for my review here. So just basic review over what inference is and the different procedures. And again, if you want that document that goes into a ton more detail, please do so. I also have tons of other videos that describe everything when it comes to inference in way more detail. And you'll see some links um, popping up in this video as well up at the top. So please utilize all this information to help you achieve the greatest score you can on the AP exam. All right, see you later.